Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Our guests today are with the Botetourt County Chamber of Commerce and there's plenty going on in Botetourt these days. Kari K. Ryder is the Chamber's Executive Director and Anna Muncy of Lawrence Companies is the Chamber Board President. And thanks for, for both of you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. And I want to start out, Kari, let's talk to you. Uh, you've been the, the director, executive director of the chamber for about a year and a half. That's correct. How would you get to Botetourt and where would you come from? I came from Hopewell, actually. I was uh, in charge of, uh, not in charge, but worked for water quality control there at the Hopewell Regional Wastewater Facility, which, okay. is far cry Talk about that from, uh, <laughs> which is a far cry from being a chamber executive director. However, I came to this role through my education and background in tourism and hospitality and being a college professor from Midway University teaching marketing and entrepreneurship. So combining kind of those skills and qualities, I think, is what made me an asset to the Bonitot Chamber, bringing just that uh, that entrepreneurial spirit, so to say, to really help our businesses on a level of growth and right. development. Well, considering your background, my next question was going to be, how did you get into water quality <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got to that position through uh, another passion and an occupation, a professional horse trainer and judge. So I consult with businesses, uh, equine businesses specifically, on how to best design and develop their farms. And wastewater and water runoff was a huge issue. And so combining those skills and knowledge made me kind of a, a, a shoe in for a, a water oh. tech at, uh, at the Hopewell Water Treatment Facility. Well, that's interesting. So have you been up to the Virginia Horse Center in Lexington? At yes, all? many yeah. times we compete there. I, I'm still currently a horse trainer and exhibitor and, and judge, and so we're up there at least three times a year. Really? And um, we, we, pretty, we stay pretty So you have busy. your own horses and all that? Yes. Um, yep. And uh, I know, Anna, you have a background in Hollands, and Hollands has a big, big equine program. I think they've sent people to the Olympics. I think we have, and I um, tried to stay away from the barn just because I'm <laughs> afraid of horses. But yeah, Hollands is a big equestrian show, um, a great presence in the Roanoke and Botetourt area. Well, Kari needs to get on, get on one of his horses maybe in the, in the near future. I agree. Yep. yep. Um, what is it, Kari, that attracted you to Botetourt? What didn't attract me to Botetourt, just the sheer experience of Botetot. Botetot, just to say in itself, is an experience. You look at the history in this region, uh, 1772 with boundaries and borders that extended as far north as the Great Lakes and as far west as the Mississippi River. Which is amazing to me. Absolutely. And so Fincastle being the kind of the county seat, if you bought land in Kentucky and needed to have it registered, you'd have to come all the way back to Fincastle, Virginia, right in the heart of Botetot County in order to register that land deed. But just the history of Botetourt, the potential for growth and the current growth that's going on there in Botetourt, the people, and, and just kind of its, its history that's been steeped and rooted even in, in the horse business. So, you know, the variety of things to do, uh, the James River, um, the just, it, it's, there's so much, Gene, I really mm -hmm. can't tell you all of the things that drew me to Botetourt. Right, and I know that, you know, when you talk about growth, sometimes people are hesitant of growth, people that have been there for a while. So is that part of what the chamber uh, wants to do is sort of be a, a, a cheerleader for growth or show people the positive signs of growth, that type of thing? Actually, a little bit of both, uh, I think. Show the people the positive signs of growth, but let them also see that growth doesn't necessarily mean an overindulgence, overinfluence of just strangers coming in and ruining the current atmosphere. Uh, I think there can be a great integration of the old and the new that can really be a positive benefit to Botetourt as a whole. And I think the people are starting to see that. Well, growth can also help keep your kids in the area if it's the right kind of growth, right Absolutely. kind of business, that type of thing. Absolutely. Um, and there's been a lot of you know growth in the area. How do you sell Botetourt County as the uh, you know the chamber of President, how do you sell Botetourt County? How do you sell the area? I think so much of what Kari said, I would just re repeat, is um, it is a it's a growing, beautiful county. 
so many things to do. You've got the James River, you've got, um, you know, Daleville, which has become kind of the, you know, the, the business hub of Botetourt, which when I was in college, those were still orchards. It hasn't right. been that long that Daleville got developed. Um, it, but you still have, yes, there's development coming, but you still have the beautiful vineyards that you can go visit. Um, I think it's a really hopping place and it's just gonna start becoming more and more active. And in terms of the chamber, we're really a resource for businesses coming to the area, businesses that have been in the area, um, helping them grow, helping them get their feet on the ground and getting settled. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to ask you, are you the first African-American chamber head? Yes. In, at, for Botetourt, and I think maybe in the region. You know, I, I dare say you're, you're probably right. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, what's the relationship between the, the chamber and the county government? I mean, how, are there ways you work together, advise each other, you know, whether it's the planning commission or board of supervisors, how, how do you guys work together? Actually, we have really developed a great relationship. One of my goals uh, in coming on board with this chamber was to try to develop partnerships. I think you've probably heard that word with a number of your other guests. Partnerships are, are, are what truly help a region and a nation to grow. Mm -hmm. So developing a very close partnership with the Botetourt County government, letting them know you guys are members of the chamber. They're one of our many supporters as well as our other businesses. So we are a resource as well to county government. We have a complementary relationship. We are megaphones and huge advocates of the business growth that they provide and produce. So we champion what they do. Right now, one of the largest, uh, I guess, things to champion is the broadband growth. Right. The county has worked extremely hard on bringing broadband and high-speed internet to some of the farthest reaches of Botetourt, which are still kind of, uh, for lack of better terms, in, in the sticks, kind of <laughs> antiquated. And so bringing that high-speed internet to them and to the region has just been a wonderful thing that the county has done, which can only help to increase business, increase educational access mm -hmm. for the students in the region and bring needed infrastructure of people wanting to move into the area. So our, our relationship is, is simpatico. Mm -hmm. Well, especially if you want to work at home. I mean, if you want to attract people that maybe their business is located in New York or Nova or something, but they want to work at home, you got to have access to broadband. Absolutely. And it's funny, my daughter lives in Florida, and that's one of the, she worked at home for a while. She's looking for a new opportunity, and that's one of the things she's telling people right up front is, I want to be able to work at home mm -hmm. a couple of days a week. Yeah. If I don't need to see you face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, so you got to have the, and it seems like the, the, the uh, Botetourt County has done a good job with that, with grants and all that, getting, getting all that in place. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Talk about a little bit, Anna, the history of Lawrence Companies, how long you've been there. And it's a transportation-oriented company, but you've got a lot of different tentacles. We sure do, and we are actually celebrating our 90th birthday this year. Um, we started in 1932. I, I like to say that Lawrence Companies was a, is a Botetop born and bred company. Um, started in 1932 as a moving company. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still um, a, a wonderful moving company um, in terms of household goods. Um, we've expanded to freight. Uh, we have a dumpster service under us, roll off dumpsters. Uh, we have uh, Lawrence Equipment. Um, we're a case distributor. We're the only case distributor in the state. We have a truck and trailer shop, um, storage and warehousing. We like to say that we can move anything from fruit flies to, to steel to 2,000, 20,000 pound trucks. So mm -hmm. <laughs> really when it comes to transportation and moving anything, we're kind of a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about the, uh, your role as uh, the chamber board president. How do you see your role? What's typically the role of the chamber, a chamber board? You have an executive director. What's typically the role of uh, you know chamber board? I think in many ways, um, the role as the president and also a board director is to partner with the executive director to make sure we're doing a great job representing the chamber and the county. Um, I think being visible at events like ribbon cuttings where you're welcoming new businesses or a reopening of a business, um, really being able to tout the resources the chamber can provide to to businesses in the area. I think being a patron of businesses in the area is a, a role of a director, um, helping to advertise and really be an ambassador for the wonderful things in the county, the businesses mm -hmm. and the activities. Do you think sometimes uh, people 
undervalue what a good chamber can bring to an area? Actually, yes, and it's, especially with COVID-19, that really created the necessity for chambers to have to kind of pivot or else succumb to possibly going defunct. Uh, this chamber, when I came on, was in one of those periods of, are we really doing enough in this region? Uh, well, you started our, right during the height of the pandemic, too. Absolutely, Good timing. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, is our constituency, our membership, are they seeing us as being a functional asset to them? And so I came on with the strategy of let's prove to them, let's change perception, let's prove that we just don't do networking events, that we are a functional resource to truly help them get off the ground. And again, I, I go back to partnerships, developing partnerships with the Small Business Development Center, uh, developing relationships with Habitat for Humanity and with Goodwill so we can expand that network of resources for the, the businesses, and not only the businesses, but the community as well. And so that cements our, our foundation within the community on so many different levels. I think when money gets tight for businesses, whatever, and they're in a chamber, then they really start thinking, okay, well, am I getting my bang for my buck? Absolutely. Return on investment is right, what right, it's all right. about. It's and my so I investment. Think, I think chambers have really, especially with during the COVID, I think chambers have really had to work harder to get people lined up. That's correct. You know, and a lot of, some chambers did a lot of, you know, connections on Zoom and things like that. But I, 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 it was interesting that even during the height of the COVID that you did see businesses cutting the ribbon in Pottawatuck County. So I guess underneath it all, people felt, felt we're going to come out of this and we have enough faith in this area yep. that we're going to get, 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 get going. Um, what's going on in Pottawatuck County over the next few months? Anything exciting? Gosh. We've got a lot of exciting things going on. Absolutely. And I'm not sure when this is going to air, but talk about some of the things coming up. Well, we're highlighting um, our signature events, uh, our golf tournament, which a portion of those proceeds goes to Feed the Needy. Uh, last year, we were able to give over $2,000 in food cards to a number of the area food banks. We have our annual dinner, which uh, the highlight of that is the silent auction. That silent auction, those proceeds go towards the scholarship fund. The Botetourt County Chamber gives out three $1,000 scholarships to Botetourt High School students. Okay. And that has just been a blessing to so many, and many of those students have gone off to, to some pretty prestigious schools, Virginia Tech, um, I think North Carolina State. So we've been very, I've been blessed to say that I've been a part of that these last two years. Um, we've got the Tinsel Trail, which is going into its third, third year now. Uh, the Tinsel Trail happens in December, and it is just... Uh, what is that? The Tinsel Trail is held in downtown historic Fincastle. Our members and non-members are able to sponsor a Christmas tree, and we strategically place these Christmas trees in the courthouse square and other park areas, and we're expanding it throughout downtown Fincastle mm. to bring in people from not only this region, but hopefully statewide to just come and walk through a historic town and... and observe these trees that our members are able to, and sponsors are able to come out and decorate with their business logo, little kitschy items uh, that really catch the eye. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just been a great, a great program the last two years. Right, and maybe they walk around downtown, they stop at 1776 Rooftop or Absolutely. the Pie Lady or something, and yep. they, they get to see. And it, down, Fincastle, the, the, the historic downtown Fincastle, is a very, very old town. I that mean, it is. It is. That it is. And again, like you said, the seat of a county that once stretched to the Mississippi. It's like they got bored with drawing counties and said, okay, <laughs> you got all this for a while. Yep. I wanted to mention you, uh, uh, and on the Botetourt County Facebook page, you mentioned this uh, a relationship with historic Fincastle. Talk about that, that a little bit. Is that one of the things Kari wanted to do is really grow relationships with some of these different organizations? Absolutely. Uh, historic Fincastle, uh, the Botetourt Historic Museum, um, there is, is the historic Buchanan. Just the chamber needs to or has been, not needs to, but has been highlighting those areas. One of the, the things that many chambers across the nation do, does is, is to really try to highlight the tourism aspect. If we can tout what we have from a historical, from a recreational, from what can I do when I'm in Botetourt, that can only go towards helping the businesses that are there. We had a ribbon cutting a few weeks ago of uh, Avenue Black, a new boutique shop in downtown Fincastle. 
On the tail of that, we had the new ribbon cutting for the new location for the Botetot Historical Society Museum. That relationship and that partnership just translated from one event to the next. And, and if we can continue to do that and highlight that, those partnerships with those historic organizations, civic organizations can only help to provide needed foot traffic into the existing businesses. Right. So mm -hmm. facilitators are what in actuality we're, we're serving as at the chamber. Right, and you mentioned visitors and all that. Does Botetourt County need to develop more hotel space? Maybe, I know they talked about development along uh, Exit 151 corridor, which I think is still coming, uh, but, but do, do you need to see more of that type of growth in certain places? Well, actually, it, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, there are some interested parties that are looking for, uh, I think, a potential letter hotel uh, in the Daleville Town Center. Uh, the desire or the hope in future is to see some added expansion out into the localities where somebody, like in downtown Roanoke, the, the trust hotel, maybe somebody will start to invest in a boutique hotel right. in some of our locales that can keep people in town, give them something to do, which doesn't really detract from the other hotels. It can only help to enhance the region and give people a destination. I, I could see down, if there's any properties like that in downtown Fincastle would be great. Uh, the Liberty Trust building you talk about in Roanoke, which I've toured, is, they've done an amazing job there. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just, what is, um, uh, I wanted to bring something up about one of the people you actually added to the board, uh, very young, uh, she looks young, Allison Bancroft. Yes. And uh, she looks like she's not that long out of school. She's with the Glebe Retirement Community now. And is it um, is it more is it important to get more people involved with organizations like the Botetourt uh, County Chamber of Commerce and Botetourt County? What's going on there? Talk about why that's important. I think it's so important, um, and really any membership-based organization, but particularly the chamber. Um, you need involvement, and I think you need a nice demographic of ages, businesses. Actually, our bylaws say, you know, we need to have small business represented. We need, you know, some of the financial industries represented and um, some of the big players, um, so to say. But um, somebody like Allison, who's got so much energy, um, she's got a background in event planning. She was just telling me today, actually, that she's working on getting a certificate in project management um, and event management. Right. Um, I think that's a real skill set where we, we do have um, many events and signature events. That's a real asset to have on the board. Um, so thinking about your strengths and what they can contribute to the chamber um, and help highlight the, the strengths of body tight and and how you can use your strengths to help with that. Right, and good to get some younger blood in there too. Exactly. Yeah. And it's as, as much representative of our membership as well. You have so many uh, new young entrepreneurs in the area. If they see a representation on the board, I think that really uh, in, invites them and, and gives them a sense of comfort that like, hey, I've got somebody that thinks the way I do that's truly serving me and can truly be that, that resource that mm -hmm. I need. I know this sort of sounds like a job interview question, but what is it about Kari with your very interesting background you think really has translated well in the year and a half you've been to, to Botata? Uh, any particular thing that you did in the past that's really serving you well? You know, I, I got to tell you, I think it's a mixture of everything that I've done. Um, you know, I, I came to the chamber actually with a strategic initiative. I, I was, I've done some extensive doctoral course study in organizational leadership and looking at the chamber from where it was to where it has the potential to be. And, and uh, Miss Anna and I have talked about this often that a good leader looks in the future, not at the day-to-day -day operations, but where do I want to see this chamber in 10 years? Where do I want to see it in 20 years? Not only the chamber proper, but since we represent so many businesses in Botetourt County, in correlation, it's where I'd like to see Botetourt County in 20 years. Mm -hmm. So if the chamber has positioned itself strategically strong, I, I see our businesses through that support network being strategically strong as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys, do you want to do I was just going to add, I think one of Kari's, um, in addition to what he mentioned, his strength of building partnerships. Um, and with his background and diverse background, he can talk to anyone That's about true. anything. Horses, water quality, yes. whatever. Yes, we witnessed him at the Botetourt County Fair put on by um, the Virginia Cooperative Extension. And he could talk, 
you know, he could talk to the banks about money. He could talk to the person <laughs> winning the pig prize about the pigs. And um, he's just got such a good people and partnership skill set. I think that's a huge asset to the chamber, and we're lucky to have him as our leader. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, uh, Kyra, I don't know if you've gone to conventions with other chamber leaders or whatever, or if you guys have, it, or, or the, have the roles of chambers been changing over the past 10 years, let's say, or the mission slightly changing? I'm just wondering if this, you know, if, if you see any move nationally even for chambers to kind of go in a different direction. Absolutely. Actually, internationally, you're seeing chambers go back. Well, historically, chambers were a functional asset. And somewhere between the time that chambers hit the scene to today, it morphed into more of just networking and, and holding functions that their membership attends. So we're starting to see it pivot back and morph back to its historical roots of truly being functional. And I think that will solidify most chambers in, in their respective nations or their respective states and their localities as being truly important. Mm -hmm. uh, a resource that businesses can reach out to, uh, a community advocate and a business advocate. Uh, I think that is what I'm seeing more chambers going back to as just opposed to let's host a networking event or let's host a, a, a a flight event or a kite event or right. uh, I think the Salem Chamber used to put on the polo match back in the day. I remember those. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, granted those are still foundational. However, being functional now mm -hmm. is what I'm seeing the, the new paradigm for chambers. And I More think of an economic development engine even. I think economic development. I also think as work and business has changed so much, a lot of people don't stay at places for 40 years anymore. So um, being relevant, I think, is something that chambers have really had to take a look at, um, do an evaluation of what are they doing and how are they serving the business community yeah. best. Again, you said it's like return on assets. You know, if I'm paying whatever it is, four or $500 a year or more or less, what am I getting for my money? Absolutely. Especially if I'm kind of, you know, struggling or whatever, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a couple more questions. Uh, one of them is I wanted to talk about um, growth, residential growth. Uh, in order to keep, you know, feeding the beast, you got to grow. Businesses want to see more residents coming in. How's Botetourt County doing on that? Do you think, from from your viewpoint, um, I believe they're talking about building more. I think they're building more at Daleville Town Center, and I think they're talking about building some residential units near the exit 150 interchange eventually. But uh, is Botetourt moving in the right direction? Affordable housing, too. You know, there, there's so much question on what is affordable housing. I think people need to really make the delineation between what's low income and what's affordable. Uh, affordable, for in all intents and purposes, is what any marketing manager or mid-level management employee would make right. and be able to afford. So I, I see the county itself, they've reached out to us at the chamber to kind of look at demographics and look at the potential of putting on a, a real estate summit to try to put heads together and, and bring in those minds and those potential investors to see how can we truly accommodate affordable living and housing in Roanoke or Botetourt County, especially with um, the, just the cost of materials. Yeah, not everybody can afford to live in Ashley Plantation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think we are headed in the right direction. Uh, I know there's talk going on with a number of, of different uh, different builders trying to figure out ways. How do we how do we find that price point? And I think the county is doing a great job of working with those developers to try to, to come up with that magic number and then work with landowners. How are you willing to sell us the land at a reasonable rate so we can make it affordable here? But with the number of national and international businesses and, and manufacturers that we've got in Botetourt, I think being able to house them in Botetourt as opposed to them having to commute from Roanoke County and Roanoke City, I, I think we're on the right only right. cusp of doing that. And since you mentioned that, companies like Eldor and all that in, in the, the Botetourt Center in Greenfield, what has that meant for Botetourt County, having that, and I guess there's still room for potential more people yeah. coming in. I think there's an, uh, some business in there is working on their building still. Or that something. is Munters, absolutely. Right. Munters from Buena Vista is coming right. in uh, to hopefully add an additional 250 new jobs. They uh, came on as chamber members and, and have just been very, very, amenable 
to working with us and, and utilizing the resources that we have. Uh, we're looking to try to welcome each new individual that comes in with gift baskets and welcome baskets as they come to work at Munters. Um, when do they get opened, do you know, Munters? You know, uh, I think it's been scaled back a little due to getting some um, some of their supply chain issues, that's correct. So I think they're probably a week off schedule. I think they were aggressive to look to open in May, but uh, that's kind of been pushed back possibly to early fall, I think. Okay. You guys excited about the future? What's going on in Baratat? Yes. I, I am. I'm very excited about the future of the leadership from both the, the county and the chamber, which is, it's all the county, so. Right. <laughs> what about you, Kyrie? You got big plans for the future? You know, with the supportive board, uh, supportive uh, town, county, and local governments, I, I see big things happening in Baratat County. Glad you made the move? Absolutely. You don't miss water quality control? I do not, not <laughs> okay. at all. We're going to leave it there. Uh, we're talking with Anna Muncy of Lawrence Company. She's the Chamber Board President. And Kari K. Ryder is the Executive Director for the Botetourt County Chamber of Commerce. And Kari and Anna, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Gene Morano. This is Business Matters. Thanks for joining us.